Now, I am aware that making a bold statement of a game being 10 out of 10 is pretty on the nose and is very subjective. However, this is my uh, one of my lists. There is going to be many different videos because otherwise they'd be far too long. Uh, and this is just a handful of games that I personally rate 10 out of 10. If you don't, that is cool. You can make your own list or please put your list down in the comments below. But just please, <laughs> please... Bear in mind, this is just my opinion. I am not stating this as fact. This is just how I feel. Okay, should we get that bollocks out the way first? Good. However, now I want to start it off with one of my favorite MMOs. And in my personal opinion, the best MMO out there at the moment. And that's Final Fantasy XIV. Not only is this MMO jam-packed full of content, uh, it's just continually updated with more patches and more things to do there is so many dungeons there's so all the different jobs you can do you only create one character and you can swap out each job with that one character you don't have to make multiple which is a godsend uh, there is the in-game card game triple triad you can spend no amount of time playing arcade games and little mini games at, at the golden saucer the game's story is also fantastic once you get past around reborn which is the base game but overall, Final Fantasy XIV has so much to give and is just an incredible experience. And you can play it for free um, up until the it's pretty soon, or maybe now even, up past the second expansion, Stormblood, which is incredibly generous from Square Enix to allow you to do that. You don't need to pay anything up front, and you don't need any uh, subscription for it. You can just play the base game and two of its DLCs completely free. That is is badass. Uh, up next is Halo 3. This Halo is, in my opinion, the best Halo out there and its campaign is still fun to play through today. The multiplayer is still awesome today, um, especially when you work out the juicy and completely broken ass combos you can do with dual wielding weapons. Uh, I spent no amount of time uh, wasted on Halo 3. I played it so much when it came out, I've even made a separate video uh, where I lost a girlfriend because all I did was wanted to play Halo 3. Um, uh, but, well, I mean, that's, that sounds a bit harsh. It's not all I wanted to do, but it's, it's a majority of the time I just wanted to play Halo 3. And at the time, I became pretty handy. I have my moments now. I have streamed it recently, um, so please check those out if you want to. And uh, I, I will be streaming Halo again very, very soon. But Halo 3 is definitely up there as a 10 out of 10 game. The next one, which is definitely 10 out of 10, uh, for me personally, and would have been a 20 out of 10 if uh, Konami would have let Kojima finish, is Metal Gear Solid 5. Again, a game that I have recently just streamed. Um, this game is, in my opinion, the best stealth game out there, and one that um, is just, it's just incredible. The customization, the options, the variety in the way you can approach missions, the ton of things you can unlock, the story is really good. The voice acting is very good. It's The cutscenes are filmed like a movie. Kojima is fantastic at doing that. And again, if you haven't played Death Stranding, uh, Death Stranding is not on this list, but it will be on a list. You can bet your bottom dollar to that. But Metal Gear Solid Five, although technically not finished, it does have an ending, but it it's... It's not what Kojima wanted it to be because Konami were just greedy and they wanted money. They just wanted the game released, which is always a fail. But if you haven't checked out Metal Gear Solid 5, definitely 10 out of 10 for me. Another one, which is 10 out of 10, but also will take you 10 years to complete, is Persona 5. This is a fantastic JRPG with amazing characters, uh, so much awesome stuff to do. Uh, you can go. At, you you're a school kid, so you, you can you do exams and stuff. You can study. You can level up certain bits by watching films, reading books, and m building things. But you can also go into, uh, you know, into another world effectively and go into people's hearts. Well, to steal their heart, you got to go into people's mind palaces. It's very confusing to explain. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I think I can't. Remember, is it called the metaverse? I I haven't. I've captured this footage a few weeks ago, and I do want to go back to it. I'm not a hardcore fan of the Persona series, but Persona... I do own 3, 4, and 5 on PC, but Persona 5 is um, definitely a 10 out of 10 game. I'm only about 30 hours in, and I think the game is about 100 hours long, and 
it's just a it's just a phenomenal experience. You can do the usual JRPG grinding. You can just you can do so much in the game, and it's got a fantastic soundtrack and just kicks a whole lot of ass. Up next is Ratchet and Clank. Now this is the PC version of the game. Uh, although I do have a PS5, it's mainly a Blu-ray player now. I do apologize. Um, but Ratchet and Clank. Rift Apart is a phenomenal game. It is a hundred percent ten out of ten. I was very impressed when I got the PC port. Uh, it's very very CPU intensive, so um, hopefully it's had a few patches since then. But this game impressed the hell out of me. Not only with its visual um, representation, which the game graphically is very very good, but also in the all the it's a collectathon game, as we all know. You go around collecting the nuts and bolts and stuff to be able to use as currency. You can go into the arena. You could, there are there are side side gigs and mini games and stuff that you can do as well. And you can travel to all the different planets. And it's just Ratchet and Clank through and through. But at the same time, incredibly fun. The combat is really fun, especially when you unlock the rocket boots so you can zip around and kick the crap out of things. That's really cool. Uh, and also, um, the characters are also a lot of fun. And I really did enjoy playing through Ratchet and Clank, and I smashed it out in a week, I think. I mean, it's not an overly long game if you just smash on with the main story. it take you about 12 hours or so. But I still have a lot to do to go back and complete it, and I do want to 100% it. 100%. <laughs> so there we go. Obviously, English, not my strong suit. Next up is the amazing remake of Resident Evil 2. Now, the original Resident Evil is, yes, 10 out of 10, but this remake is one of, if not the best remake out there. This is how you do it right, and Capcom did it right here. They kind of dropped the bollock a little bit with the Resident Evil 3 remake by rushing it out, essentially, but Resident Evil 2 is just great. It also has some of the best zombies and zombie gore effects in video games that I have seen. Uh, this game is genuinely quite scary at points. The graphics is great. The, the, the absolute love they gave to the original game within this game, again, is great. And it's a game that I can just keep playing again and again, trying to get better, get faster, and uh, try and conserve your ammunition. If you love survival horror games and you've not played Resident Evil 2 Remake, you are truly missing out. It's worth picking up. It goes on offer quite cheap all the time, and it is definitely, definitely worth grabbing. Now, up next is uh, an obvious one, and that's Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 is... Well, it's, it's Red Dead 2. I mean, do I need to say any more than that? This is the Cowboy Simulation Dream. You can do everything in this game that you could think of in within the Wild West. You can be a bounty hunter. You can... There are no end of side quests and things to search for you can help you help this old paleontologist find bones you can help somebody find cave paintings you can help somebody find artifacts scattered throughout the world you can help a scientist build a robot uh, there's other things i'm not going to spoil as well um, you can fully customize arthur you can make him fat you can make him thin you can have his beard long his hair long or short depending on how you want to play um, you know, you've got to polish and clean the weapons, otherwise they can jam on you. Um, the story itself, the voice acting, the overall acting is amazing. There is no end of mini games that you can play as well. Uh, I'm, I don't know how to play poker to save my life, and I cannot get the hang of dominoes. But I do keep trying. There's also fishing, which is pretty cool, and hunting. And there's like nearly 300, no, there's nearly 500 and different animals for you to hunt. And it, which also includes some special ones as well. It's just insane the sheer amount of content within the game. And not to mention the fact that it's just damn awesome. Uh, up next is Sea of Thieves. This game is uh, one of the games I play the most of. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm always hopping on for an hour here or there just to... Uh, uh, you know, just 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 to do it, just to do a little shanty, just to do a, a, a little journey that never turns out to be a little journey. It always ends up being incredibly long. However, um, Sea of Thieves, in my personal opinion, is the best pirate game out there. This game is just freedom, and you can go out and you can collect, you can go out and bounty hunt for the skulls. You can go out to just grief other players. There is so much to I again this section for Sea of Thieves could be super long and I don't want it to be super long. So all I will say is that if you want a very good pirate game, uh, it's it's incredibly 
awesome with friends. I quite like going out on my own, on my own little sloop. Um, but uh, I do play it with friends and, and my brother from time to time as well. Um, but it, this is a game that is just... It, you could just go out into the world and just continually find shit to do, and that is always awesome. Up next is another PlayStation game and another port. Now, I 100%ed Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4 a few years ago when it first came out, and love the hell out of it. It is my favourite superhero game, and Spider-Man has always been my favourite superhero. But Spider-Man port to the PC is very, very good. It's fantastic, even. I haven't played the PS5 remaster of the PS4 game, but I imagine it looks and plays similar. Um, it's uh, it's just it's Spider-Man. You can thwip around, and I don't care how many people say it, the Spider-Man 2, original Spider-Man 2 from the PS2 and PS uh, Xbox era, the web swinging on that is not better than the web swinging in this. I will die on that hill, and I'm going to make a separate video on that issue. Um, <laughs> this is the best Spider-Man has ever played, and that is my opinion, and I'm putting it out there. I'm going to get shot for it. I don't care. But Spider-Man is a fantastic game. There's loads of side quests. The web swinging is fluid. The traversal is amazing. Uh, the story is really well done. The voice acting is incredible. And there is just many heartstring moments in this game. If you know, you know. And one of them uh, took hit me like a train, uh, being a lifelong Spider-Man fan. But that's all I'll say on the matter. Spider-Man is incredible. So is the Miles Morales game as well. And I am looking forward to Spider-Man 2. I'm not going to pick it up this month as it comes out the month I'm recording this. Um, but I will get it eventually. Probably for Christmas off of my fiancé maybe. Uh, but I will get to it eventually. And the final game I'll talk about is The Witcher 3. This is one of my favourite games of all time. And is 100% a 10 out of 10 game. And when this game came out, it was highly revered. It is still highly revered now. Yes, Geralt can handle like a bit of a dick at times. And ever since they updated it with this new update where you can have it over the shoulder and stuff, they've had a lot of issues with PC. Like, for example, the frame rates are a little unstable, even though my machine can run every single game that you've seen on this video pretty much maxed out graphically with solid 60 FPS at minimum. Um... I can't have DirectX 12 turned on for Witcher 3 because it just spazzes out. Uh, so this is DirectX 11. But The Witcher 3 is just jam-packed full of content, monster hunts, uh, true decisions and um, repercussions from making different choices. Uh, so many different things you can equip Geralt with. There's all the sorceresses that you can cuddle. Um, and there's just so much to do in this game the game is rammed with content especially with the dlc which is always added with it now where you get your own vineyard that you can upgrade but yeah i again i witcher 3 is fantastic it's monster hunting it's fighting the wild hunt it's incredible um well that's just the first video of probably many i'll be making of these 10 out of 10 i don't want it to go on for too long thank you very much for watching please let me know down below what you think of any of these games and just please bear in mind this is just my opinion. It's not fact. You may not like any of these games, and that's cool. I will judge you silently, but that is that. It's, it's cool, dude. It's cool. But again, thank you very much for watching.